FM Business Network. So much for one broadcast. Hello everyone, it's another very beautiful day and thank you very much for joining us. You're watching the EOM Business Network, indeed the voice of corporate Nigeria. I am Olorogo Elkana Mawari. Today on the program, we shall be taking a look at the Nigerian economy from the viewpoint of industry operator. Also on the line of is Let's Talk, and our focus is on the Nigerian British Chamber of Commerce event on technology and digital transformation in agriculture. On Spot On, we bring you Olua Show or Motor Show, who is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Gokada, Nigeria's largest delivery service solutions provider. And on the face-to-face, -face, we shall continue our interface with an industry Amazon. The beautiful, insightful, and resourceful Mrs. Agatha Eric Udorie, who is the founder and chief executive officer of Agatha's Interior Design Limited, Nigeria's leading interior design solutions provider. It's a package you must see. Sit back as we bring you the details. Research reports have shown that any country that desires capacity and quality to enhance productivity for economic growth and development must give adequate attention to human capital. Let's get ready for a world of creative skills and talents. Challenge the week. 2 million naira up for grabs. Visit www.challengetowin.com. Challenge to win. Creativity, rewards, empowerment. Tony Lawa is the Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Unity Estate Development Services Limited. It's the fault of uh, governments. The government lack what you call supervision. They lack supervisory team and monitoring team. Um, you, know, you know the system is also corrupt. Look at what happens in the Koyim. The building was approved for 16, 16 floors. And it goes to 21 floors. Because it's set to some officers. And because they are set to the officers, they say, ah, it's possible now. Most of the buildings could last because of three major reasons. One, lack of quality materials. They want to short corner. We were supposed to use about uh, 100 bags of cement. They use 50 bags of cement. Inferior materials. Less quality materials. And the corruption at the highest level. Because we know that this building can only sustain four floors. He went and blamed the officers, said to the officers, Oh, yeah, you can go for ten, something meant for fourth floor. It can go, they, will, they will say, Eighth floor is possible. So it's very, it's very unfortunate that our system, the system has collapsed. But with, the, with good government, with good quality government control, the government have to work on their one on quality control. Then the monitoring, the monitoring team must be so strategic team that goes to the site all the time. Without even informing the owner they are coming. So Nodemux is another example of a joint venture with Springfield Agro. Another example he was talking about was the project with NGN. Um, I like this project and I'll tell you why. It's uh, something quite innovative. Basically how it works, you have waste uh, where black shoulder flies come and the black shoulder soldier flies, they eat from the waste. Um, and this creates frost and the frost then is used for increased soil fertility and at the same time, it creates uh, larvae. And the larvae then is used, processed into protein feeder product for, for the poultry and agriculture products. Our focus right now is on data processing. We took our knowledge from the software and go, and we decided that a lot of drones are all over the place. How come nobody is using these drones in pipeline surveillance? How come nobody is using these drones? for agriculture and of course uh, there were also regulatory issues that we needed to deal with what are the problems that we are trying to solve 
our population is exploding and we're expected to double Nigeria's population in 2050. We're about 200 million right now and we're expected to grow to 400 million now. That's an incredible explosion. In what we are doing, we understand that yes, there is going to be growth, but we already see an issue with the growth. The issue we see, number one, is aging. So a lot of people who understand what we are trying to do, who are that educated enough to understand, are already growing old. That is an issue we are having. So how can we get the next generation to quickly start learning before the older generation becomes too tired to transfer the knowledge? That is one issue we are having. Then there is also the issue of productivity. Those that know don't have strength. Those that have, those that have strength don't want to know. This is Unity Estate Development Services Limited. Welcome to our world. Property managers, property and project development, real estate financing, and more. Unity Estate Development Services Limited. Call us now on our premium numbers. Oluwa Shew Omotosho is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of GoCada. Yes, the initiative, um, you know, became essential and necessary in the space we operate. We've um, encountered situations where, you know, due to security issues, customers' packages get missing, get stolen, damaged, you know, in transit. We have um, had instances where, as a business, we've had to refund some huge amount of money by not just putting the necessary things in place. I mean, these things are not that expensive to put in place if you put the right process. Um, we looked inwards and said, the best way out of this quagmire we are in is to ensure that we have um, a proper cover for these uh, customers' goods. And what that does in essence is to give our customers confidence, make them trust us more, and make them see the brand, Gokada, has been concerned about whatever they go through as our customers. We're not just um, particularly interested in getting the monies from them, but we also need to um, be concerned about ensuring that their deliveries get to the destinations in the right condition, which um, was sent through our platform. So that was what you know, brought about this um, development. It covers a whole lot of things, but again, the value up to 600000 yes. I mean, that's a huge sum of money for just, you know, transporting stuff in, 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 in transit within um, Lagos um, as we start at the moment. So, yeah, the quest to be concerned about our customers, their goods to get in the right the place, um, destination, the right conditions, the right numbers, no tampering and all that. Yes, that was all brought about this initiative. Okada um, Rides Limited, as we call it here, is a last mile, you know, delivery company, you know, technology backed that was um, established in 2018 by our founder, um, late Fahim Saleh, a very inspirational leader and visionary leader that came around town from, I mean, somebody, he just woke up from his bed and decided to come into Africa and chose Nigeria as, as his destination. Um, to empower lives, right? I would say it's been a very topsy-turvy ride in Gokada, um, but overall, you know, the vision of the founder was to ensure that lives are empowered, connecting African cities better, right? And, you know, through technology, that was the vision, that was the, the brain and the mindset behind um, Gokada Rise Limited. That was what led to the establishment of Gokada. We pioneered with um, the ride hailing um, operations, you know, in 2018, where, you know, through our app, we customers place requests for apps and um, rides. And then, of course, 
the rider comes to your location, takes you, and then drops you off at your destination. Before then, um, just a few months down the line, there was a Lagos State ban on the ride dealing then. Uh, but again, like I mentioned, the super visionary man in the person of the founder, Nate Fahim, he foresaw the future, you know, he didn't just have one plan, he had like 10 plans, right? Um, we metamorphosed into logistics right after then, and then we've been on since then. We've grown, we've done over a million deliveries, we've, um, you know, we've expanded, you know, the business, Gokar has also been um, privileged to create jobs for, cumulatively for over 2,000 people, and connecting over, you know, millions of lives together in the products and service offering backed by technology, which, which you, we use. So um, I would say uh, Gokada has been like a journey, but again, there's a lot more it's still in the kitty for Gokada. We've just only started, um, more is to be expected. Gokada's vision is very simple, right? It's to be the big, biggest and most preferred super app in Africa. So the vision was beyond or is beyond Nigeria. Um, it's Africa wide. Um, it's not only limited to us in Nigeria to become the biggest super app. And super app in the sense that uh, we're not only limited to a particular space. You know, we started with Pride Daily, like I mentioned. We're currently into logistics. We have um, our food vertical already, G Food. Um, we are looking into so many other verticals that very soon uh, everybody, you know, the, the populace of Lagos and Nigeria at large will see what we're doing. You know, we are going to metamorphose and then all of these verticals will be concurrently in operation. So we have customers, we're serving in the, and by so good, the Lagos State Government, fantastic job they've done, would bring us the right dealing back to Lagos, you know, in the light of the current recent Okada ban. We are looking at, you know, we are looking closely at seeing, monitoring the situation and see where, if um, the government will allow, you know, license operators back in that space, we are ready to get back, right? So uh, there will be the ride dealing, there will be the logistics, there will be the food space, there will be the maybe fintech or I don't know. So, so many things before we can actually achieve the vision of being the biggest super app in Africa. So that's the vision. And for the mission, um, like I said, just in four years, right, um, we've been able to like empower lives. You know, it has always been about empowering lives in Bukhara, reaching, connecting cities together, and empowering lives through the provision of our innovative and products and services in Gokada. So our mission, we're empowering life, providing innovative solutions. That's what we do in Gokada. For empowering lives, over 2,000 lives have been, you know, worked with Gokada, you know, at different times or the other. Currently, we have well over 1,000 um, active um, G pilots. Uh, pilots are, are, you know, company owned, um, riders that ride the Gokada brand. And then we have partners, we call them G partners as well. We have well over 2,000 G partners. So together we're providing job, you know, income making opportunities for over 3,000 um, Nigerians and Lagosians at the moment. I mean, as a business, that's, that's a good way to, you know, reach out to people. We've taken that number off the streets of Lagos providing a um, source of income and livelihood in a way that everyone is comfortable, so to speak. So yes, I would say we are reaching out to lives and empowering lives in our own bits, in our own spaces. For our services, um, right now, we are playing in the logistics sector. We, like I said, connect individuals, customers, you know, pick up, deliver, their goods and services. What makes us stand out? We are we offer same day deliveries, you know, quick same same day deliveries, fast deliveries. You place your order on the app. There's somebody within uh, two three kilo, kilometer radius that will get to you. Pick up your orders. Your orders, your goods, your parcels are safe. You know, again with the GIT uh, covering we just you know uh, recently um, put in place. We are customers are at rest, at peace, that their parcels are not going to be stolen. Or peradventure in the event of damage and loss, we replace, we recover, you know, for the customer. So um, for our services, 
fast, seamless deliveries, same day deliveries, comfort to your, to your homes, um, safety of your parcels, and then professionally, we do it in the right manner. You don't have to worry about anything. And should any case or anything happens, we also tackle customers' complaints very, very, very seriously. We take it very seriously in Gokada. We don't take it lightly, right? Uh, riders know that once a customer complains, the company is going to take a share. So they're always on the verge of delivering the utmost customer service. We have a rating system. We have a, a, a riders' um, performance measurements, KPIs, which we track on a daily basis. And we have a pilot support unit. We have a customer support unit that is always on ground, 247, to reach out and ensure our customers are well served and well um, attended to. Let's get ready for a world of creative skills and talents. Challenge the win. Two million naira up for grabs. Visit www.challengetowin.com. Challenge to win. Creativity, rewards, empowerment. Agatha's Interior Design Limited. Welcome to our world-class quality and designs. We define the lines in style and design with pieces that are well-crafted and designed to fit the personal and creative style of homes, public spaces, offices, and more. Agatha's Interior Design Limited. Call us now on our telephone numbers or visit www.agathasinterior.com. Better still, Come over to our corporate office at number 200 Awolowo Road, Southwest Ikoyi, Lagos. Agatha's Interior Design Limited, fashion phase, style is eternal. Beautiful, insightful, and resourceful Mrs. Agatha Eric Udoria is the founder and chief executive officer of Agatha's Interior Design Limited. The interior designers are the ones who have gone to do a course. And you know, those courses are not readily available here, but they do it in the UK, so they're qualified. The decorators are people who just pick interest, but they also do short courses. And the interior architects are like the ones who do more than so they can do space planning and the rest. It's not that the interior designers don't do space planning, they do. But the interior architects do more with the architectural part of it, you know, in the internal of the spaces. So, so basically, you find out that um, what's happening now, that everything is becoming clear whichever person you want to use do you want a decorator on a project who selects you know do the, the boards and then do the presentation or do you want to do 3ds and and do you want you know so everything is laid out you know as so when you have a project um i'm sure the architect will, will advise you properly but give and take you have you start from the decorators to the interior designers and the interior architects and I think the, the architectural part has been taken away. I think what is available now is interior designers and decorators. And then um, people who have learned on the job also have been recognized for the number of years because they have a lot of experience. And so um, that's what is happening now in the industry. A design that carries everybody, that is not faulty. It's not about the 
when when I say good design, everybody that sees it, recognizes it. I mean, it, when you say good design, depends it depends on internal or external. But if you look at the spaces, it carries the family of that home. You know, if if you have five children, everybody has a space that is that is beautiful. Everybody has a space that can carry their needs. It's about need base, you know, because I can I can design for you now, but it doesn't affect your life. If, for instance, if you are a disabled and I design a house for you and I forget to put roll out spaces where it's much easier for you to use your wheelchair, it's not a good design. Or your, I didn't put a, an elevator where you come in and you roll on the, on the spaces, the, on the ramps, take your ramp into um, your lobby or your living room and then maybe you want to go to the next floor, your bedroom, you go up. Or maybe you take your wheelchair and you roll into the living room, into the bedroom. So you have massive doors. Yes. So for me, that's the point. A good design is a, a design that carries everybody and caters for the needs, is need-based for everyone. Let me answer this question in two parts. What is responsible for the growth is the fact that people are aware of the environment now and people have become house proud. Very much so. And if you look at the, the, the quality of architecture in this country, the design industry. So um, a lot of people are very aware of the environment and people want to leave. There is now called, which we now refer to as lifestyle. So that growth you're seeing is people wanting to get the best for in their homes. It's not the days of Costain hand um, wooden chair no people are, people are looking for comfort people are looking for um things that are made here but different very different you know and people are looking for comfort looking for inspirations looking for new things so those are the things that are driving the industry whereby you have a lot of people wanting to become decorators or designers the external have involved into the internal and when i talk about the external people go abroad they stay in airbnb they are very finicky now do you know what i mean so when they come in to their own homes they want the best let me give you um play a scenario for you after covid do you know what was the biggest sellers all over the world mattress pillows and sofas plus lights because people didn't want to live in dark houses anymore table lamps people were staying more in their beds so they needed a very good quality pillow and a good mattress and bed linen those were the biggest seller in the world go back and check it people became so house proud they wanted their homes to be different they wanted to have all the comfort they wanted to change that their kitchen the kitchen must have a kitchen table a breakfast room you know a breakfast table so what they sat on was important where the lie was important where they sat down to eat was important that was what happened during the post-covid you know so for me it's very important that we note that that a lot of people became house proud they wanted nice homes it doesn't need to be expensive but that's why I always say that I'm an affordable living store. You know, people wanted lifestyle that were not expensive. So they needed to live the life. I'm sitting on a gold chair. It's a very nice gold chair. It's not expensive. It doesn't have a, a it's made out of metal. But I, I had included a back cushion and a front, a, two back cushion, one for the seat cushion and the back cushion. And that's it. And I'm sitting comfortably. Yes, we things are affordable and it depends on what you're looking for. 
And don't forget, we still have a serious manufacturing collaboration, you know, with two or three of my old staff who runs the carpentry shop. And so we do what they call a copycat. <laughs> Bespoke interiors, and you can still achieve what you're looking for. So don't be intimidated. Please come to Agatha's interior. Don't be intimidated. Mrs. Gomez is here to take you through the process and you can get what you're looking for. That's totally not correct. What's our population? 200 million Nigerians. And 200 million Nigerians cannot say they're not happy with the local content that is produced here. I love bespoke. You know why? I can get what I want. Instead of buying a table that is a, a smaller, I can buy a, a table according to the space I want. So our industry has become very, very important. And the quality of what is coming out of the carpenter's shop is unbelievable. Don't forget, most of the jobs that are done now are done with boards. You can do everything with the different types of board available in our market from dining table to um, except for dining chairs you still need your wood to bedroom headboards so bedside lamp tables no i don't agree with that no our products are so beautiful the made in nigeria products they are well don't forget you remember taiwan they started by copying our people are best copies man we copy you <laughs> serious copy and guess what what comes out of that copy is unbelievable. And that's why, that's, that's the aspect of interior design that I'm working on, bespoke, made in Nigeria with my hands and with my carpenters. And I have a lovely lady who makes all my fabric sofas. Very nice, very, very nice. I can only speak for myself because I'm a developer, a build. And this is where we bring out the curtains on today's package of the EOM Business Network. Thank you very much for spending your value time with us. We hope it was worth your while. But just in case you missed out on any aspect of it, then you can come with us to any of our feedback portals, as you can see on the screen. Our deep gratitude to you, our sponsors, for your continued interest and support. Always remember, with you and us, we are charms. Oh yes. I remain Olorogo Elkana Mowari. Please let us again, same time, same channel next week. We'll see you then.